Obrigado. Um, it's afternoon, so I will say good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, first of all, I'd like to congratulate you all that you've stayed so far so long. But I'd also like to congratulate all the organizers to be holding this. This is the first ever business day in the history of the World Water Forum. And I think that's a sign that business leadership is stepping up. We have heard many examples of inspiring new solutions so far that have been, uh, been shared by the panel. And one of the, key, one of the key problems is how do we spread the word? How do we get this message out further? So today, I am proud to be able to launch the CEO Guide to Water. Uh, this has been developed by the World Business Council for Sustainable Development, together with its member companies, some of which we've had on the panel here today. And we've developed also a Portuguese version that will be launched today um, online, so you can get both the English and the Portuguese versions online on the website. There are copies of the English version outside in the foyer, if you can get hold of them. But let me tell you perhaps a little more about what's included in the CEO guide. Uh, we know the size of the problem. We've heard it many times. There is a quote in the guide. Nature is screaming at us, and the language it is using is water. And for business, the materiality of water is very clear, and it's very urgent. Uh, we know that there will be increasing demands for water from agriculture, industry, and for energy. Some say up to 85% by 2050. And this will intensify the already existing competition. In many places in the world, the water demand already exceeds supply, so it means without further action, there will be no water available to meet societal, environmental needs going forward. We heard the quote today on the panel, no water, no life, and certainly no water, no business. Stable supplies of good quality water are just as essential for delivering the low carbon world that we need as it is for stability, prosperity, and peace. And so water is central to the achievement both of the Paris Agreement and the Sustainable Development Goals, all 17 of them, not just SDG 6. Another key lesson is that water users are totally interdependent. Local water scarcity is not just a threat to a company, but to everyone that lives in the same catchment. One water user's action can put at risk the operations of another and the livelihoods of many. So collaboration, a watershed and landscape approach is essential. What is key is investors are paying ever closer attention to water, and this will bring it to the border level of many businesses. The recommendations of the report of the Task Force on Climate-Related Financial Disclosures, the TCFD, this came out last year, and is looking at how companies can report and prepare for climate risks. And this will drive disclosures on water much more than before, as demand from investors for improved climate-related financial disclosures increase. And we are already seeing some sectors stepping up to see how to respond to these recommendations. So I think the business case for water is very clear. Water impacts businesses' bottom line. It impacts the supply chain, business continuity, creditworthiness, capital costs, and so many other areas. But it presents risks, and we've heard of some, but it also represents non-physical risks. It's not just flood risk or drought risk. There's increased legislation. There's exposure to litigation, threats to continuity and growth. And of course, as many companies will know, there is a strong reputational risk 
if you're seen to be taking more than your fair share of the water. But it's much more than just risk. The opportunity in water is immense. It can increase resilience, but it also it represents important new business opportunities. We've heard of many of the innovations um, today, new solutions. The smart water technology market is estimated to grow to around 20 billion US dollars per year by 2021. And there's a huge opportunity in the investment that's needed on sanitation and clean water. We've heard today of the need for that investment. 17% of people in Brazil don't have access to clean water. 43% of Brazilians don't have access to sanitation. That's a huge need, and on the other side, it's a huge opportunity to get involved in the delivery of that water sanitation and waste water treatment. So business is a very important player in delivering on Sustainable Development Goal SDG 6 on access to water and sanitation. It's also key to delivering the other goals. What we say is business is not responsible for delivering the Sustainable Development Goals, but without business, they will never be delivered. So to embark on that journey towards water stewardship, the CEO, CEO guide suggests seven steps, a seven-step toolbox um, for businesses uh, who want to take the issue of water um, more seriously. What should they do? Well, firstly, start at the top. You have to ensure that this is at the board level. You need board level oversight to make sure water is integrated into strategy and planning. Secondly, you need meaningful but ambitious goals and targets, both at the industrial level, the country level, and the global level. What is not valued is often wasted, and that's often the case with water. So valuing water appropriately to actually work out what the real risks and opportunities are is important. We've heard today about implementing innovative business solutions to achieve goals and targets. And we've also heard the need to collectively address shared water risks and opportunities. This is something that business needs to do together with the other actors in society. And through this CEO guide and other ways, we hope to raise awareness and create engagement. And companies can do this with their employees. We heard the call for action um, very vividly from uh, Coca-Cola. With suppliers, with your customers, so that the whole value chain gets involved. And we also heard from the panel the importance of policy. Business should advocate for policy and finance enablers, calling out for policies to support business investment in water smart solutions. So we have the CEO Water Guide. It is signed by seven CEOs and other business executives. It sends a very strong signal and a call to action for business to address risks, seize the opportunities presented by sustainable water management, and be part of delivering the SDGs and the Paris Agreement through the water-related aspects. So we would, uh, we would encourage companies to take, have a look, um, the CEO Water Guide, as I said, available in English and Portuguese, online and in print, and encourage companies to actually stand up to one of the most pressing sustainability challenges that we all face, and that's water security for all. Thank you very much. Agradecemos ao senhor Peter White pela apresentação e, na sequência, convidamos o presidente do The CEO Water Mandate, senhor Jason Morrison, para falar sobre oportunidades de engajamento. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let me start by thanking our hosts at CNI for uh, this event, as well as our country partners in pulling together a very strong program. It's uh, really a, a 
remarkable set of uh, speakers throughout the course of today, uh, and the attendance is very strong on a Sunday. So appreciate uh, you taking the time out of your busy schedules to be here on a weekend on a topic that's near and dear to my heart and in a very well-refrigerated room. Uh, I'm uh, going to give a little bit of a survey of some of the ways in which companies can engage on water globally. Uh, I'm going to talk mostly about uh, activities the Seal Water Mandate has been involved in, but I'm going to spend a little bit of time also trying to do uh, a canvassing of other events, uh, other platforms and opportunities for engagement. A few words about the Seal Water Mandate itself. Uh, it's now a 10-year-old platform. Uh, it's been uh, in existence since Secretary General Kofi, uh, no, not Kofi Annan, um, Monkey Boon, uh, Ban Ki-moon, Ban Ki-moon, thank you, um, uh, uh, launched it uh, in Davos. Uh, there's about 140 uh, companies that uh, endorse these six commitment areas that you see below and report annually on their progress against these commitments. We have a partnership with uh, CDP such that any company that does the water questionnaire that you'll hear about next uh, uh, suffices its annual reporting requirement for the Sea Water Mandate. I want to orient uh, uh, people to this idea of a stewardship progression, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about these engagement opportunities within the context of such a progression. So a lot of companies will start on this direct operations piece uh, of the equation. You hear companies making water efficiency commitments, pollution reduction commitments. The acronym there, WASH, is for water access, sanitation, and hygiene. That's the nomenclature in the water industry. And many companies have made commitments to supplying safe and affordable water, uh, not only in their workplace, but in the communities in which they operate. I'm going to talk a little bit about that later. Eventually, uh, companies, and we heard uh, uh, Olga from Coca-Cola talk about this, they're one of the pioneers in this area, begin to assess the context in which the company's water use occurs and to evaluate the risk and opportunity asso associated with that. And that contextual awareness is a really important prerequisite to them becoming strategic around the way that the company thinks of water, its ambitions, both in terms of risk mitigation, but also the opportunity side of the equation that we talked about. And then lastly, there's this engagement piece. Um, Nati talked about collaboration and partnership that takes place in many different ways. It can happen on a place basis at a basin scale or at a watershed or a community but it also can be collaboration throughout a supply chain of a company and uh, leveraging partnerships to achieve better performance on water throughout the value chain. And then you have the accountability aspect of communication. So much reference to uh, the SDGs and uh, particularly here goal six uh, I'm going to spend uh, much of the time in the afternoon session talking about this goal and how it relates to the sustainable development agenda and to water stewardship specifically. But just to say here that as a water, corporate water stewardship initiative of the UN Global Compact, CO Water Mandate has been very uh, interested uh, in even leading up to uh, 2015 uh, and the now what's called the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda, uh, but we have been engaging in conversations around water in the business community going back well before that and trying to understand how stewardship can help align with and advance policy objectives now codified through this global architecture of the SDGs. But when we think about how companies are actually going to advance the SDGs, there's a couple of component parts here. One is uh, this need to minimize your own impacts on the water resources. Uh, and this can be seen as uh, just getting your own house in order. Uh, but also, I think it makes it uh, an important element of establishing your own credibility for uh, ultimately then partnering with others outside of your facility fence lines. 
The second piece, uh, I also want to build on the morning session to say what we really need in order to scale and to expedite the scaling of innovative practices for companies not only to be the pioneers that take their first step, but to work with other companies and other partners to get others to take their first step. That's going to be an important linchpin in getting to where we want to be on water by 2030. And then lastly, partnership, 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 as Natu would say. And uh, this can take place um, both on a place basis, which I'll talk about, but also on th themes. So here are some examples. And as I mentioned, many of these are the ones that the Sea Water Mandate has been involved in. But we do a lot of our work through consortiums. This year, the Sea Water launched what's known as the Action Platform on Water. And a subset of the Sea Water Mandate endorsing companies that are really looking to uh, ramp up their engagement on water and their collaboration with one another uh, are involved in this initiative. You'll see that it has a pretty wide range of uh, industry sectors represented from food and bev to apparel to mining and pharmaceutical and others. It is now the operational uh, platform for where the seal water mandate does its programmatic work. And we will follow, uh, focus on the fo four following areas, uh, direct operations and supply chain. This whole idea of measurement and impacts, and particularly around how in the water stewardship space we need to do better at understanding how to measure the impacts of our partnerships. Right now, that's not something we do well or consistently. This whole domain around water uh, access and sanitation and, and human rights. Uh, and then lastly, collective action and engagement with policy, both at a basin scale, but also internationally. Um, I'm going to skip over this for sake of time. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, thematic uh, uh, consortia that are out there that companies from Brazil can engage with. Uh, should they have a interest in the topic. The first one is around this nexus between water and climate. This was a platform that was launched in Paris uh, at the COP. Uh, it is a commitment platform, uh, uh, affectionately known as the Business Alliance for Water and Climate, or BAFWAC. Um, there are almost 50 companies that have uh, made these um, commitments, these three that are on the screen. The part founding partners uh, of this initiative were uh, WBCSD, CDP, CO Water Mandate, and our corporate partner, Suez, which was an essential connection to the French government, which in and of itself was trying to build on the action agenda that started in Lima. Some of you may remember the Lima to Paris action agenda, now known as the Global Climate Action Agenda. And uh, this is uh, one of the non-state uh, actors uh, platforms for the business community to support that action agenda. Uh, it is also one of the, it's the only water-related commitment under the We Mean Business uh, uh, platform uh, that is, uh, I believe Orla is gonna talk a little bit about next. Another thematic area where companies can engage and which we would welcome pioneering companies to focus on is on the issue of uh, WASH and a, a consortium known as WASH for Work. Um, the idea behind WASH for Work is to elevate business uh, action in three domains, WASH in the workplace, WASH in supply chains, and WASH in the communities where companies work. Um, and this uh, is a platform that has a, a number of partners. Here you'll see some corporate partners, but also NGOs and UN agencies. And the idea behind this initiative is that, uh, that a stovepiped or siloed approach to dealing with wash issues has not been effective, but the degree to which companies and the business community can collaborate with other stakeholders uh, to pioneer. Uh, on this topic, uh, that's the basis of this initiative, and um, and it's uh, one that uh, we look to land in Brazil uh, with those companies that are interested in taking action forward. Another project is in this domain of uh, trying to get more consistent in the way in which companies assess the context. 
And many here in this room will know that businesses are oriented around trying to set ambitious targets for where they would like to head and then measuring progress against those targets. Yet we know that when we think about how a company sets a target within a very limited geographic context, it gets very hard to do, and especially to then have the data available and the ability to consistently me uh, measure our progress toward getting there. But we also th see this whole area as the linchpin for companies to be able to better communicate and collaborate with their public sector counterparts. And the reason for that is that our public sector is where the context is managed and also the rightful place where the long-term water security goal is defined. And so the degree to which companies are better able to align with the way that the business sector or the, in that area and the public sector is thinking about the long game of water security and identifying that and then coming up with common ways to measure progress toward that, uh, toward that uh, destination is a very important area of work. And so there's a handful of NGOs and uh, UN agencies, UNEP, that are looking to test a methodology on how companies can take a context-based approach to target setting. Uh, for those here in Brazil that are interested in pilot testing that methodology, I'd uh, be very keen to speak with you. And then there are a number of tools, uh, open source uh, online tools that the mandate has been involved in uh, over the years uh, to try to build the capacity for those uh, that want to understand best uh, practice, examples of best practice, and, uh, well, and how they might advance a particular area of their water stewardship strategy. This is the URL for where you can find this toolbox. And we've also established uh, an uh, online platform for collaboration called the Water Action Hub. Um, we will be talking uh, tomorrow at our uh, collective action section uh, for uh, Brazilian companies, how we plan to uh, launch the tailoring of this tool to Brazil. Uh, currently, there are about 450 organizations that are uh, registered to, on the hub. Uh, and this is meant to be a very quick way to find other organizations, whether they be businesses or other stakeholders, that are working in the same geography and that are interested in working on the same topic as you. And once that uh, connection is made, typically the, the collaboration happens in real life, not online. But I also want to talk a little bit about some other uh, efforts that we, uh, we the Seal Water Mandate, are only uh, tangentially involved in. Uh, one, and you'll hear much about the Alliance for Water Stewardship, when uh, companies are thinking about implementing stewardship at the site level, uh, there is one global standard, and it is a conformity assessment specification standard that has been developed by the Alliance for Water Stewardship. Uh, it's a very strong tool, and I think we will hear from Adrian later this afternoon, uh, who heads the uh, AWS. And then you have company examples of, uh, or examples of companies that have uh, open sourced a tool that they have developed. Uh, we'll hear today about Dow's uh, Water Blueprint uh, that they're releasing here at water, uh, World Water Forum. Uh, and then also AMBEV and their effort uh, to develop a water management tool that's applicable for small and medium sized enterprises. Many of you will know the risk diagnostic tools that, have been, that are also freely available online. Uh, the World Resources Institute has one that's called the Aqueduct, WWF, the water filter. Uh, Ecolab has uh, developed a tool that allows companies to try to calculate the value at risk associated with uh, water. And then there is a, a slew of organizations that are, uh, that are trying to collaborate with businesses on water. Uh, GIZ has a, a, a water stewardship program dubbed IWASP. Um, the NGO headquartered in the US called Ceres and WWF have launched what's known as the Ag Water Challenge. So for those food and beverage companies that have agricultural supply chains, uh, this is an opportunity to share best practices uh, with other companies in your sector that are uh, trying to progress uh, action on uh, water. You have a number of industry sectors that are pioneering on water. ICMM is the mining industry. Uh, you have the Sustainable Apparel Coalition, which is uh, the apparel sector that uh, the Seal Water Mandate is partnering with, with a number of the apparel brands to try to advance practice in supply chains. 
and ITP stands for the International Tourism Partnership, one of the first robust methodologies uh, for calculating water use at a site level, for in this case hotels, and to come up with harmonized metrics for doing that. The I ITP is now turning its attention to try for companies in the hotel sector that are trying to think about the context in which they operate at the basin scale and how to collaborate with partners. And then you have a number of regions um, that I hope Brazil will emerge as a, a leading region in this regard where the business community has come together under a structure uh, to try to coordinate its collective action engagements toward a shared goal. Um, SWPN sounds, stands for the South African uh, version of that, the Strategic Water Partners Network, which was uh, initially launched by the World Economic Forum and the Water Resources 2030 Group. We have Karen Krichnak, who has assumed uh, the head of the WRG here that is joining us and is gonna talk about some of that work this afternoon as well. Uh, and then the CWAC stands for the California Water Action Collaborative as another place-based uh, uh, orientation for stewardship. And then lastly, we have uh, a number of platforms that are in the uh, disclosure space. Uh, CDP has been leading for a long while now. Uh, GRI is soon to release uh, an updated version of the water component of its standard. Uh, drawing significantly on CDP's work and also a good practice guidance on disclosure that the mandate produced about six years ago. Um, and, and I think you'll see, if you haven't already been involved in this work, a, a huge step forward on the way that companies can talk about what they're doing on water in a meaningful way that resonates not only with the investor community but their stakeholders at a, at a local scale. And that's not meant to be an exhaustive list by any means, but I wanted to try to give an overview of some of the things that are out there and available to the companies here that are trying to do more on water. Thank you very much. Nossos agradecimentos ao Sr. Morrison e ainda sobre o mesmo tema, nós convidamos agora a gerente de segurança hídrica da CDP Water Mandate, a senhora Orlaif Delarque. Thank you. Um, so, my name is Orla Delarque, I'm with CDP, and today I'm in a very difficult position um, being the last person between you all and your lunch. So, I will be quick, I promise. Um, CDP is a not-for-profit charity that runs um, the environmental disclosure system that allows cities and companies to measure and manage their environmental risk. And I'm part of the water program. And so we distribute a questionnaire every year to cities and companies, allowing them to measure and monitor their water risks. Um, that program, which is about nine years old now, has grown and grown, and last year over 2,000 companies responded to that questionnaire, disclosing water-related information and risk. So that means that CDP has the world's largest corporate water data set, and what we do with that data set is analyze it and gener generate insights um, to, to show kind of where water water stewardship is now and where it needs to go. One of the places we're using the data set is in the upcoming UN SDG synthesis report, which will give a state of play on where we're at for SDG 6. We also score the companies that respond. And you heard earlier from Braschem, they were on our A-list in 2017. And they were the only Brazilian company on the A-list. Um, and you can see how the A-list has grown year on year. So we're really are starting to see the, the momentum and movement necessary in the water stewardship space, which is great. But we'd love more companies to engage. And how, how can you get involved? Well, if you don't respond to the CDP water questionnaire, please consider doing so. Um, you, have, you, know, you have me to talk to, you have my colleague Lucas um, here from the Sao Paulo office of CDP. But also you have lots of responding companies in the room. We heard from Nestle, Coca-Cola. Uh, we'll hear later from Semigi, 
and Petrobras. So please talk to those companies. How did they find responding to the questionnaire? And um, you know, look at the questionnaire yourself. Can, can you respond to all those questions? If not, why not? Because it's designed to gather data, but also to prompt action on the ground and ask the right questions uh, to prompt the right conversations within your company. So, so have a look. Um, but also, as Jason just mentioned, there's the Business Alliance for Water and Climate. Um, as he mentioned, that was launched uh, during the time of the Paris Agreement. It was really aimed to bring water up the climate agenda at these uh, UNFCCC, the climate change negotiations. Um, we also want to shine a light on those companies that are innovating in the water and climate area, that nexus between those two issues. So we actually have 49 companies signed up to this commitment. Uh, they have 650 billion in revenues, and this year we're aiming to raise that number to 100 companies. So anyone in the room that is interested by this platform, who, who knows that they either are taking action on water and climate issues or want to do more, please come and talk to us and consider signing up to this Business Alliance for Water and Climate because we can bring your voice to um, these climate negotiations and show that there is a strong business uh, consensus behind water and climate as an issue. Um, this is our newly launched website. And um, yeah, I've made it very clear to circle the, um, the join button. So please do sign up. Uh, it's, it's been cut off, but there's also a tools and resources box. So there you can read case studies from many companies uh, who've, who've really innovated in the water and climate space. But I won't stand between you and your lunch anymore. Um, I'll conclude the, uh, the morning session and, uh, and see you again in the afternoon. Thank you very much. <laughs>